Thank you for listening to Life Improvement Radio. You are listening to a rebroadcast of a previously recorded show. You are here, so I'm excited to welcome to the program author, cartoonist, award-winning cartoonist, Eddie Pittman, and, and, and uh, Phineas and Ferb, right? Uh, you're, you're best known for your work on Disney's Phineas and Ferb. Uh, Eddie, thanks for calling. How are you? I'm doing great, Neil. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely, Eddie. Now, I'm going to go into the – and I'm almost positive I had one of the voices of Phineas and Ferb on my show. We are talking celebrity stuff. You're probably hearing me jabber. I almost am positive. I'll have to go back and Google it with all the different people I've interviewed. But tell us a little bit about that experience. Then I want to know about – is this your first time at Miami? But write it really quickly. I'm sure once people know that you've worked on that, there's lots of questions, aren't there? Oh, well, I – yeah, my um, I got to say that uh, working on Phineas and Ferb uh, was one of the best gigs I've ever had in my career. Um, I was a uh, a writer and a storyboard artist for the show for the fourth season and beyond. We did some uh, longer episodes, some uh, hour long episodes after that, including the uh, Phineas and Ferb Star Wars episode, and uh, that was just a, a blast. I was I lived out in L.A. for a couple of years and. Uh, and uh, it was just an amazingly talented crew to work with. Because I have, I've, I've seen some of the movies that you've worked on, uh, but I haven't, I haven't actually known of. I, I've seen your work, but I don't know too much about you. So, uh, what is one thing that I, that I should know as uh, someone new talking with you that uh, about you uh, since I've seen your work? Well, I, you know, that's the thing about working in animation is that uh, you you tend to have a, a certain amount of anonymity. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a, a collaborative art filmmaking is. So um, working on uh, movies like uh, Disney's Mulan and Tarzan, I'm just one of like I don't know four or five hundred people working on that film. Uh, so. It's it's easy to um, you know for for people not to know the names of of much of the crew, uh, but beyond that I've I've done a lot of humorous illustration, um, and I've recently uh, been able to to get my my popular web comic Red's Planet published uh, by Abrams Publishing, and uh, that's what brings me to the Miami uh, Book Fair. Awesome. Is this your first time in my, in my for the festival, or have you been here a couple times in Miami Book Fair? This is my first time for the festival. I, I, I don't think I've been to – I think the last time I was in Miami, they didn't have a baseball team. So that's how long it's been. Okay, okay, okay. So tell us about that project. Tell, me, tell us about the book. Well, Red's Planet is, uh, like I said, it's a graphic novel. It's the story of a little girl named Red who is you know, mistakenly – kidnapped by a UFO because, you know, that happens. And uh, she's whisked away across the galaxy and eventually finds herself uh, marooned on a distant planet with a menagerie of misfit aliens and, uh, and in a contest of wills with the, uh, the planet's grumpy custodian. So not everything's great for her right there. But somehow she's got to figure out how to not only survive on this planet, but how to make this planet her new home. And uh, oh. it's it's been a it, it for me coming from animation, and working on everyone else's projects, their movies and their television shows. Yeah. This is my chance to make my Pixar movie, my Disney movie, and yes. uh, that's that's what I'm striving for. Was well, I was about to ask or... a question. Go, go Peter. Sorry. Oh, go. Sorry. That's good. Uh, go. I'm just I'm just curious for uh, is it easier or harder working on your own project or uh, or you know versus working on you know other people's projects you were doing? I you know I think it's 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 a little of both. It's it's e- easier in some respects uh, because you have full creativity, um, uh, but but it's more difficult because um, you have to own everything. Uh, you can't pass it down the line to someone else in production and say, you know, I'm not really good at, at drawing crowd scenes, but, you know, the guy, guy in layout's pretty good at doing that. So um, there's a lot more, um, not only responsibility, but if I create something, I've got to be able to pull it off. And uh, so it's more challenging in, in that way. Gotcha. Yeah, um, and, and that's and that challenging. I was going to say, when you told me you said you want this to be a full length cartoon movie or you know, or or a show, I could tell 
when you just describe this because your experience working on those amazing shows, you have a great creativity idea for this. And you've had, and, and it just seems like that's what you're striving for because I can picture this story in a movie. I really can just from what you've described so far. Yeah, absolutely. For, for me, um, I, I, even when I'm creating a story in the very beginning, I see it as a as a film because my my love is of film. I I studied film and and uh, my career has been in uh, film animation. So it always starts in my head as as a moving image. And at that point, I have to kind of pull it back and figure how am I going to make this into a graphic novel. Gotcha. Are you wow. planning on making it an animation? Oh, it would be wonderful, you know, if um, um, if if the right uh, people stepped up and said they were interested. That would be a lot of fun. Gotcha. Cause it, it sounds like it would be an awesome thing. Like, too, there's something you could have as a movie or have a con- as a continuation series. I just see it as being an awesome thing, as being someone who's been exposed to a lot of, you know, movies and uh, animated content. Uh, I It just sounds like an awesome idea to me. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, that's, that's certainly a lot of people's um, – um, dream is to have something they've created turned into an animated film. Gotcha. And and how has the the book been so far? The graphic novels have done very well so far since it's been out. I you know I I I'm constantly hearing from uh, from librarians that they can't keep it on the shelf and and from from people right. I meet when I'm able to get out of my little cave and and go meet people. Um, how much they love it, and and that's a great thing because that's why I'm doing it to connect with an audience. So, so that's that's great. That's a great that's great news, and it makes you feel good because when you're always constantly drawing and creating, you finally get to come to somewhere like Miami and meet with your fans and really get that Absolutely. validation and that feedback. And yeah. that's what yeah. as and, artists you know, as artists feel that and Peter as well, that we really don't get uh, feedback from our craft that much. So when we get the opportunity, it's nice. It is nice. It's, it's um, you know, it, it's a very isolated creative process uh, where you, you sit in a room by yourself and create something and, and, and hope that your instincts are right. Uh, and you don't know until it makes it out there in front of the audience. Uh, if you've, if you've, done what you hoped you you had uh, set out to accomplish are you putting your um are you putting your stories on social media like exposing it to an online audience like twitter facebook and all that stuff well red's planet actually started as a web comic um i i started uh, i guess it was about 2010 uh posting a page a week and gotcha. um, cool. it was it was a great way to do it and and for for me it was it was ideal. Is I think it's probably the closest we could get as a as a artist or authors to performing live. There was almost an immediate response as soon as you posted a page, and it was that kind of response that I think really just encouraged me to keep going. I, I might have given up if if I had just been sitting in a room for those for the past five years. Gotcha. All righty. Okay, so um. What what's so? What will you be doing present your presentation today at, in Miami? What do you, will you be? Is it today or tomorrow? Presentation. Well, I'm on, I'm on a couple of uh, panels today. Um, I think you guys just talked to uh, Jeffrey Brown, and I'm I'm on uh, on a panel with Jeffrey. Um, but I'm let's see. I've got two panels. One um, I think about uh, creating uh, universes, uh, comic universes, and um, another about uh, writing adventure stories. Cool. Awesome. Well, that's, that's well really I really <laughs> appreciate you. It's amazing. Peter, do you have one more question? Or... Oh, no, no, no. I was just making a statement. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. No, I, 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 I love to hear your passion. I, I'm going to root for you to get this uh, to become a cartoon. And that you get uh, the opportunity because I, I, I see a, a great story that fits science and also uh, a, a journey story uh, that can be really yeah. look, really good, look good on film. So you just got to keep plugging away. Advice I've gotten from so many people that told me that I've talked that's famous that have gotten their stuff to that level is never give up. Take 5,000 no's, 20,000 no's till you get the right answer yes. 
So I just keep at it. Oh, absolutely. Going. I'm I'm the poster child for uh, never giving up. And that's what we have to do. And we just can't say because just because somebody says no. And I had that same story when I interview celebrity um, celebrities. Is you know certain people tell me no. Well, then I just keep plugging away and go to the next one. Yeah. And I always get amazing people to chat with. And and people said, oh, why are you doing a a, a radio show? seven years ago. And I told them, you know what, I'm, I enjoy this and I'm going to grow this. And here I am today. So I appreciate you calling best of luck. Uh, and, uh, and, and we'll chat soon, man. Okay. Well, thank you so much oh, for what, having me, Neil. Also, also we need to know where you can purchase your book and stuff for our listeners out there. Oh, well, well we the, book the book is everywhere. It's in, it's in bookstores. It's, it's on uh, online bookstores. So you can, you can get it everywhere and you can connect with me, uh, at Red's Planet, R E D S Planet dot com, or on social media, I'm under the uh, the name Red's Planet on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. So come visit me there. All right. Well, thanks for calling. Keep the line open as we continue to discuss uh, the sh- uh, this awesome festival. So take care, man. Great. Thank you, man. Bye bye. You're welcome. You're listening to the Author's Corner, powered by Life Improvement Radio, live from the Mighty Book Fair. Thank you for listening to Life Improvement Radio. The views expressed by show hosts or their guests are their own and shall not be construed in any way as advice from Life Improvement Radio. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our website. Personal perspectives expressed by the producers, writers, or editors will always be presented as such. Any rebroadcast or retransmission without the expressed written consent of Life Improvement Radio is strictly prohibited. Thanks for listening.